Dave Williams presents Conversations.Buzz. Hello, Penny Pizer. How are you? I'm good, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Um, you you wrote a book. How long has it been since that first uh, first edition? Came out almost a teeny bit less than a year ago. Came out yeah. I think February thirteenth, two thousand twenty three. Yeah, you're you're very fast about those. And and uh, we talked about that a little bit. The people can go back and find that uh, YouTube uh, episode too. And uh, so now you've got a new one, and I wanted to I wanted to make sure that we had a chance to talk about it because uh, as of right now, it is the end of January, so we've got Valentine's Day coming up. Yes, we what do. A, what a great, great gift idea! For, I think so <laughs> for the for the person you love, if that person loves iambic but pentameter and uh, and and sonnets and Shakespeare and stuff. And if for, they don't know they love it, they can find out they love it. <laughs> well, that's part of the charm, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of interested about the structure itself, but we'll get well, maybe we can get into that in a little bit. But uh, you, I suppose you have a copy of the book there with you. You can show it. I to do. Me. I only have one copy because uh, my author's copies haven't arrived yet. That's that sonnets from suburbia, and what's the what's the rest of the title? Romance dance. Romance dance, right? Because yes. this is all about romance. And I guess yeah. we need a little bit of a background on you, too. You are a professional actor. You have been for many, many years. How long? Mm -hmm. Have you cared to, care yes. to tell us? How did you get into acting and why? Uh, how to get into acting? Uh, my, my beloved dad, when I was six years old, I lived in New York, and my parents really loved musicals. And um, one day when I was six, I got to skip school and I went into the city to see a matinee of My Fair Lady, Lady the original cast with really? uh, Julie Andrews and Rex Harrison. Wow. And I watched that thing and I just said, I want to be that. <laughs> so that's kind of how it started. And you and you stuck with it, too. Yeah. yeah. So m my understanding of and I think most people have this uh, belief about actors based upon we what the things we read is that. All actors love the theater, would rather be on the live stage than anything, much, much more so than movies or television, um, and and that uh, all actors are steeped in the traditions and the Academy of Shakespeare. And I don't well, know- not out, not out here, I'm afraid. No? <laughs> You're in I, well, I, I would say that's not- uh... I, I definitely wouldn't say all actors. I would say that most of most of us from my generation, I suppose, do come from that. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I, I guess I could say a majority of actors, but definitely not all actors want to be on the stage. Right. Not in L.A. <laughs> well, you've done a lot of TV and a lot of a uh, lot of movies, so. You yes, kind of I, I've experience. done I've done I've done it all of the stuff. I I am a theater person. That's that's the most fun. That's the only place where, you know, when you're performing, you're in charge. I mean, as you know, film and television, it that's the director's medium and and you and the editor. You don't really, I mean, you do your job, but you're not really creating the performance the way you are on stage. The thing that fascinates me about uh, professional stage is the fact that uh, y'all typically will do between six and eight performances in a week uh and i can't i can't and then and this can go on for months or even years and i know very frequently they change the cast a little bit but i can't imagine how you can keep a performance fresh every day and twice mm -hmm. a day twice a day on sundays i just mm -hmm. i don't i don't know how you can go out there and do it that way well it's it is that is always the challenge uh and I mean, that's that's also part of our job. And when you're in, I've only been, I, I wish I could say I'd been in more than one long run, but the only long run I was in was uh, my uh, first equity job, uh, Hotel Baltimore in New York at Circle in the Square in the 70s. And we were doing eight a week. And I did, I think, 200 performances in a wow. row. And there's there's no getting around it. I think any actor will tell you there are peaks and valleys you know, like out of eight shows a week, you ha might have one show that was just, oh, God. And then yeah. and then one show that was like, oh, we were really on it tonight. And then the rest are kind of hopefully at a nice 
high level, but they, they def it definitely changes from night to night. It, yeah, and but but with the knowledge of your craft, with the experience, with study, uh, th th those distinctions are not are not generally recognized by you know anybody who's in the public and not in the hopefully in the hopefully yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any horror stories? Anything really awful that happened? Horror stories. Funny that oh well, well. I mean, I have the typical uh, in in Hot L. Of course, I was in my twenties. Um, I don't. I never went up on my lines, but there was a gal who probably was how old I am right now. Who was she? Was the kind of elderly gal on stage, and she was regularly going up. I mean, she had this very long monologue in act two. There were three acts of this play. It was kind of a long play. She had this very long monologue where she's kind of rattling on about a childhood memory. And, and that's another challenge. Uh, eight a week, sometimes if you get to a, someone's very long speech, the challenge, and then you're just listening, the challenge is to really stay in the moment and stay with stay with it. But this yeah, gal was going up all the time and she was like always turning to whoever was on stage to give her a cue, you know, she was, and she'd make it seem like it was your line. You were right. <laughs> right. She'd go, it's like, she'd go, well, Dave, what was I saying? You know? Yes. <laughs> and, and so I, I finally had had enough of that because it was happening every week. And so finally, one night she said that to me. She turned to me and said, oh, no, no, what what was I saying? And I said, I don't know, Lily, you were just rattling on about something. <laughs> and she never did that to me again. That's <laughs> what, I think that's what, uh, I, look, I've had enough, uh, you know, uh, local theater uh, experience uh, for almost 30 years. And, I, and uh, that's one thing that audiences never really pick up on. And that is that, Every time, every time it looks like a, an actor has gone up on his lines, there's a very good chance that it was the person he's talking to who lost his or her place. Yes, and very well. Leaves could you be. standing there to to respond somehow, and yeah. you're going, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's uh, that's part it's of the a ha It's a hazard. I mean, it happens to. It's it's just one. It's just one of those things. Yeah. All right. Talk to us about a little bit about. Uh, why don't you why don't you give us one of your love sonnets here first and okay. then we'll talk about that and we'll talk a little bit more about that okay let's see okay what will i do uh let's see all right here's here's you saw i needed someone how did i actually choose you for my mate by happenstance or karma that was owing Appearing at my front door for a date, you did remark my front yard needed mowing. <laughs> Chagrined, I bade you enter my abode, and taking note of your pleasing appearance, I quickly donned my perky first date mode and suffered nerves, but you offered reassurance. I saw I needed someone to take, you saw I needed someone to take care of chores that typically are done by men. My short skirt and my lack made chances fair that you'd agree to ask me out again. I had most pleasant dreams and slept past dawn. When I awoke, I saw you'd mowed my lawn. <laughs> the Sorry about that your... little flub in there. I took my eyes off the oh, page. Oh, right. that's Memorized all right. these, le these that's yet. Sorry, this is just a table read. Um, you... you, you... You, uh, but your your uh, professionalism is obvious, because everything involved in reading something like that properly is involved in uh, the meter and uh, huh. phrasing, right? Uh, yes. Without it, it's it, you know it's impossible to make it sound right or to make it flow properly. Now, as I just looked this up because it's it's something I've read before, but I've forgotten about it. I wanted to find out what again is a sonnet, and it's like. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's like 14 lines and 10 syllables in each line. Is that right? Uh, I don't look at it as, yeah, you could say syllables. There are five feet in every line, five I, and I am is a feet. So I am big pentameter, five feet. So it's always da-dump, 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 da-dump. 
Uh -huh. And as I say in one of my sonnets, it's like heartbeats penned. Uh, and that's one reason they resonate so much because it really does go to the boom, 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 boom of your heart. Uh, and it's, yeah, so a sonnet, there are several different kinds of sonnets. I write Elizabethan. Uh, 14 lines, three quatrains, a quatrain is four lines, and one couplet, obviously two lines at the end. And there's a definite, in Elizabethan, there's a rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. And uh, there are other kinds of sonnets, which I'm not, which I don't write in, and I can't off the top of my head tell you the rhyme schemes, but they're a little different Um a funny thing that seems to be happening, I mean, the definition of a sonnet is in my, I have a, you know, a, a book that talks about different, all the different forms of poetry, and they describe a sonnet as 14 lines with meter and a definite rhyme scheme. But these days, it's very curious to me, and I have yet to get someone to tell me the answer. I just don't know if it's because people reinvent rules these days. But um, there's a Pulitzer Prize winning book called Frank's Sonnets. And it's filled with 14 line things, but there's no meter and no rhyme. And, you know, to someone like me, I'm going, OK, how are they sonnets? Yeah. And no one has come back and told me exactly why. So it seems well, to they're be. Well, Frank, they're Frank's sonnets, right? Yeah, they're Frank's. Frank's Frank just not good at it. made up the rules. He, he might be a but clever fellow, but he's weird. not not very good at the at the form. Yeah, it's 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 very weird to me. It seems to be a thing. People just and I I haven't seen um you know a be better selling book or I haven't seen a book of sonnets where they use uh, abide by what I consider the rules. Well, so. you know what there was a time uh, a couple of years ago for some reason I got it in my head that I would I would create a haiku and and paste oh, yeah. one every day on Facebook, and I get it. And I found I I never I don't I've never studied them. I've never read a bunch of them. I don't really understand the basis for them. I did uh, I did learn the rules, and I've forgotten them now. You know how many five seven five? That's yeah. the syllabus. Yeah. And and I found I found uh, it was actually a lot of fun doing it. To me, it was my version of a crossword puzzle. I hate crosswords. Yeah. I hate any kind of puzzle, but I do love words. So it was fun in that respect. And I suppose there's some uh, gratification for you in that too. Yeah, yeah, there is. Well, you're a, you're a writer. You're a prolific playwright. So you know. Well, I'm not prolific, but at any rate, thank you. Yes, I've done done a lot of uh, poking around with words. Um, did did Shakespeare invent sonnets, or is was that a form that kind of developed? I don't think he invented it. No, um, but he certainly is the guy most of us think of when we think right. of sonnets. Right, and it's it's wonderful to pick up his his book, which I do very frequently. Sometimes before I start to write, I just check in with the master, and uh, it, it's it's a good thing to do. Kind of get into the zone there a little bit. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I mean, I've written a couple of sonnets where I've done little, given myself a little task, like taking uh, the last word, taking one of his sonnets and taking the, writing down the last word of each line and then writing my own sonnet to that word. And that's a, that's a fun exercise. Filling in a lot of blanks. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's fun. I, I, I assume that uh, this this these books of yours are really unique in terms of their their form and uh, and what they're designed to do and I, and I think what they're designed to do is to contrast our uh, um, modern sensitivities in our lives with that of the of the of the form of the poetry is that right mm -hmm. yeah I, I I mean I find that form is freedom. I don't find it constricting. Um, while it may be some sort of a challenge, I I I find it. I just don't find it restrictive. It's mm -hmm. it's just like an actor who, uh, you know, for me, once I have my blocking, once the director has set where you're supposed to go, right. that's when I find the freedom. I know where I'm going. I know my lines, but in between that is everything. Yeah. So. I, I find it, I, I think of it the same way as I do as an actor. 
Can you hold your book up again? I want to make sure that everybody sees the uh, the uh, mm -hmm. costume that you're wearing. A uh, little yeah, bit I... higher, if you would. A little bit higher. I want to see your feet there on the, oh. in the picture. In the picture, yes, the tennis shoes. Have some nice <laughs> converses there. Yeah, right. <laughs> that kind of says. Well, it Lady, all. Lady Penelope doesn't wear a comfortable costume, but her footwear very yes. comfortable. <laughs> Lady Penelope is a character that you assumed. Before or after the books? Before. Okay. Um, when I started writing sonnets about, well, about 12 years ago, I started writing sonnets in earnest. And then I started submitting my work to be published. Uh, I, I did have luck getting individual sonnets published. But, you know, when I first put a book together, I don't even remember quite how many years ago that was. I was submitting it all over the place and, you know, no takers. And um, Kind of classic sonnets or... Were they funny like these? Oh, they were like, well, yeah. I mean, they were all, they're all the same with me. It's, okay. it's my, it's Elizabethan sonnets on modern day topics. So right. it's always, always been that. So, um, and so one kind publisher who was rejecting me uh, said, well, you know, you're an actress and, you know, you say these sonnets are very performable. Why don't you try to uh, develop some kind of online presence since, you know, make videos of yeah. these sonnets? Yeah. So I took that idea and ran with it. And I just, I, I don't remember exactly the day I came up with the idea of, well, it would be funny to have an Elizabethan Renaissance kind of costume and be saying these words that were not Renaissance-like. So that's how that happened. And I, you know, my costume, I love my costume. It's, it photographs great. It's actually like a really nice Halloween costume in terms <laughs> of quality. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, It's been through a lot of wear. I've been really using it pretty hard for seven years. But anyway, so I, I have this YouTube channel, which I encourage everyone to look at it. Just go to YouTube and type in sonnets from suburbia or my name. And you'll come to a channel where dozens and dozens of people have looked at my sonnets. <laughs> That's wonderful. And you you also uh, go out and do live performances. Yes, that's a relatively new thing. I wrote a show for Lady Penelope last year. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I, it, I was developing it for about a year and a half. Uh, and I did it at the Hollywood Fringe Festival this past June. And this year in August, I'm going to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Oh, with it. so if you're in Edinburgh, wow. <laughs> that's a big, that's big, big time stuff. Oh, I, I, I've always wanted to perform there and uh, it, it's, it's going to be wild. It's going to yeah. be really wild. Carol Ann and I were in Edinburgh uh, this last summer. Oh, for, nice. We, yeah. And we, we've got a friend got a friend there and uh it Jeez, is the can most... we stay with them <laughs> <laughs> it is the most fabulous the the most breathtaking city i've ever been in that's because, wonderful isn't it because it looks it still looks like it did 600 years ago yeah and it's all functional oh yeah it's beautiful i haven't been there i was there in 1987 for the festival i wasn't performing i was there as an audience member a friend of mine was in a show and i had a blast I mean, and you can imagine it has exploded since that time. Last year, there were 3,000 shows. Mm -hmm. to give you an idea. So there's a lot of competition. You got to work. Lady Penelope is going to have to work really hard to get <laughs> people there. Have you considered approaching uh, the Shakespearean Festival in Ashland in Oregon? I have, actually. I. It's funny you should say that. Uh, before the pandemic, they have... Well, you must know this, Dave, because you sound like you're very familiar. Um You've been to see stuff up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, the green show, they have that free show before hand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I applied to that uh, before the pandemic. I applied to be one of the performers in that. And uh, I was in the running and then the pandemic hit. So everything uh -oh. went away. So I just resubmitted an application a couple of weeks ago. That so we'll see. A, that would barely be a commute for you and Doug. You both have a place not too far from Ashley. You know, we're getting, you know, actually it is kind of hours away, but we're selling it. Oh, I'm to say. yeah. Darn. But that's anyway, so point. yes, that's a very good suggestion. I think I would fit in perfectly there, but. Oh, absolutely. They have yet to weigh in. I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> How about giving us another 
another uh, example of sure of, uh, okay of this one i'm going to read this one more carefully i i've got to memorize these i haven't done my that Sorry. yet okay this one is called a bloodless story oh hear my tale of woe a bloodless story about myself a creature of the night and most depressing for no blood no glory in love with one who only lives in light I bit a soul with type 2 diabetes, and from the moments, sugar's what I craved. Despite my bribes and poetic entreaties, from these desires was clear I'd not be saved. <laughs> now SPF 10,000's what I wear. <laughs> to cope with sunshine where my love exists, the sweetness of his skin too much to bear. I had one teeny bite, now he resists. I'm permanently banned from Transylvania and wander now in Hershey, Pennsylvania. <laughs> do these ideas come to you fully developed or do you have to just kind of say, well, I know how I'd like to end this one. Let me see if I can work my way down there. It's it's all of the above. I mean, you as a writer know, I mean, sometimes you go, oh, I know I'll, for you, you know, I'll write a play about about X, where such and such, and you know, kind of have this idea. Hmm. Um, I'd say it happens in all kinds of ways. I make a lot, of, I've learned to make a lot of notes. Like sometimes I'll just suddenly get an idea of a fun rhyme couplet, I'll, or not even the couplet, I'll just get two words that are fun. And then I, when I sit down, I'll go back and try to see what that might be. Or I'll just, you know, I'll go to a funeral and I'll say, something's occurred to me about that. Actually, my next book, uh, my next book is going to be uh, called Death Warmed Over, Ooh. I think. Or it might be called To Die For, I haven't decided, but the theme is going to be our demise. So, but anyway, so I just, or I just get an idea. I mean, and since my stuff is very much about everyday stuff, I'll be cleaning and I'll, you know, just yeah. think of some riff on cleaning or, or my grandkids or, you know, there's just material everywhere. And the, the beauty part about a sonnet, it's 14 lines and you're done. <laughs> Not like a that's, novel or a play. Well, that's kind of the way I feel about plays. I look at somebody yeah. who's written a, a book like like Doug has written that one, this wonderful novel. I actually have it sitting right here. Oh, wonderful. It is a great novel. It really is. But I don't know how I don't know how a person sits down to to write a first novel in particular because it is such a long, long, laborious job, and it's oh and it's so, and it's only you. Yeah. There's nobody around to help. If there is anybody around, they're not helping. They're getting in the way, and I just I don't know how you sustain the uh, the uh, stick to a tippiness and the. Well, I'm sure I'm sure Doug knew how many years it took him to do that. He started it 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but but um you know i think it's the same as i think it's the same as anything you're alone but say you're alone when you're writing your plays the thing is um you're also not totally alone you're with your characters right well that's and true you know you really aren't alone and also most editors will at some point i mean most writers will employ an editor um, you know, I think that's, I haven't met an author yet who hasn't said their editor was supremely important. So at some point, other eyes get involved in your work mm -hmm. and, uh, you carefully choose who you show it to. Um, it's very unwise to just show it to your mom and a lot of friends. That's, that's not a good sort of reader too, <laughs> but, um, so, you know, it, you're really, you're alone, but you're not alone. Are you still actively um, acting? When they let me, but yeah. so far the only person who's let me is me doing my own show. <laughs> so, but that's fine. I mean, things are starting to pick up since the strikes are over. And so yeah. I expect to be having auditions, but uh, I got to tell you at my age now, um, it's been so satisfying doing my own work Uh as opposed to saying a few lines on someone else's television show. It, it's, it's, um, you know, not that I, I love television and film, but 
you know, if it's not, if you're not doing it and you want to do something, you just got to make your own stuff. So. Very well said and great advice for anybody in any field of endeavor uh -huh. or anything they want to <laughs> want to do. That's one thing you were talking about. It's like you could be vacuuming and you get an idea and people, I know people are always asking writers, you know, where do you get your ideas from? I say, well, they just happen just like they do with you, right? Whether it's or not it's. Yeah. Whether it's just, or not it's something that you're going to put on a page or yeah. if it's something you're going to go out in the garage and do, you know. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's like uh, it, it can be absolutely anything. Sorry about those little beeps. My fax machine is. I can't hear anything. Excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really I, I was reading Rick Rubin's uh, terrific book. Uh, let me see. Did I have it? Oh, highly recommend this. Uh, it's a bestseller, The Creative Act, A Way of Being. And I, I just, I I so love this book. I consider it a, a sort of creative person's Bible. Um, you might like it, Dave. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm writing it down right now. Yeah. Rick I recommend Rubin. every, I, I read everything that Doug ever says he liked. Yeah. Well, he's, yeah, Doug actually has been trying to pry my copy out of my hand so he can read it. I've, I, I'm what? actually... Uh, it's called The Creative Act, and it's by Rick Rubin. Okay. It's at the top of a lot of bestseller lists. It's And I'm actually on my second time through. I mean, I read it, and then I immediately started to read it again because it's one of those, you know, it, it's it's just so, so valuable. And and this guy talks, talks about, uh, made me think of it when you were talking about where do you get your ideas from, you know, he addresses what some people call writer's block. Yeah. And and he says that, you know, all the ideas, I mean, you know, ideas come in and out and there's always another one coming. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you just have to wait for it. Uh, and it, it's just, all. I thought that was a very comforting way to look at it, that yeah. it's not that there's nothing there I can't write. It's just that, no, you're not, allowing yourself to just kind of see or feel or hear what's out there. Yeah. It's all just floating by. Sometimes I get so upset because I'll, I'll, I finally have taken to keeping a notebook by my bed because I'll wake up in the middle of the night with some idea for a sonnet or something. And I think, oh, I'll remember that. And come morning time, no. Yeah. And I even got these cool little pens. You can get them on Amazon um, that light up. Yeah. And that's great for you know, at least trying not to wake up your partner. It doesn't work with Doug. He <laughs> wakes up like that. Um, but anyway, they're just all out. And you think, damn, that was a good idea. I can't remember what the hell was I thinking. And, you know, that idea may have just trickled off into the ether, but something else will come along. I was about to say something, and I, I don't remember what it was. Love That's all right. It. It'll come back around. It's, <laughs> oh, I know what it was. Yeah. Uh, with, with what you're talking about, inspiration, the ability to sit down and do it. And do you ever find or do you believe that uh, a creative person's mood often gets in the way or, you know, uh, helps the process fire off on any particular day? I know that I can't I can't do anything uh, after 11 o'clock in the morning, noon or so, and have any sense of creativity going on. Or yeah, but I, you do in the morning. It seems you seem to be saying in the, the morning's your time. Right, right. That's true. And I think everybody's different, but I know there are a lot of people that do all their writing at night and so forth. But mood just is a tremendous obstacle for me sometimes. I, I would say for me, um, it's not mood. It's am I going to sit down or not? Yeah. And that I could be in any kind of mood, great, bad, whatever. It's getting my seat, my butt into the seat. Uh, so it's not mood. It's more like will uh, and, and discipline. And I'm not the most disciplined person in the world at right. all. I don't write every day. I do write every week. But uh, and yeah, and it's and it's prioritizing too for me because we you know we've all got our to do lists or yeah. you know there's lots of stuff, lots of distractions, 
you know, we can all waste a lot of time on social media. Um, it's very seductive. Um, it's also been inspirational for a lot of my sites. Um, but yeah, so for me, it's not mood at all. It's, it's, it's the will. I mean, I'm not in the mood to sit down. I, there's some quote by, oh, Somerset mom, is it? Something, someone asked him, it's some famous quote, someone said, do you write um, on a schedule or do you just wait till you're inspired? And he said, oh, I just, I just wait till I'm inspired, which happens every day at 9 a.m. <laughs> I love that. Love that. Yeah, it's like, and that's, it's that other thing, the muse has to know where to find you. Yeah. Well, so I, I, I love, the, I love those you have to you have to consider it what you do to be what you do right whether it's professional or or otherwise yeah. this is or what i do if it's just journaling or if it's just journaling yeah or... yeah can you give us one more before we wrap this up then i want to sure. get a look at the book again i've got a i've got a slide prepared so i'll put that up oh again. okay and i'll stick your uh, okay. youtube um, channel on it too this one is let's see All right, this one isn't so much about, this one isn't so much romantic, but that's all right. Competition. If life's a competition, then I must ask myself why I choose to play this game. Will winners matter when we've turned to dust and history has blotted out each name? I heave a sigh for yet I am despairing, despite my protestations, shrill and long, Impossible for me to stop comparing my earthly music to another's song. The need to come in first can breed a habit of turning every friend into a foe. If I see an advantage, I will grab it and top it off with braggadocio. Perhaps I can be gracious from afar, but only if I'm better than you are. That's brilliant stuff. I got to tell you, that's a that's a topic that I think about at length, uh, almost daily. I don't understand competition. I don't understand why it matters so much to people to win or or be right. I just don't. Yeah. Well, being it. right, I think I have a sonnet, some sonnet somewhere about that. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Once again, the book is called. Show us the book, please. Sonnets from Suburbia, Romance Dance. And there is the earlier version. And they're both just delightful. Um, Thank you, Dave. Yeah, they really are. And uh, highly recommend them for gift giving or for just yes! buying for yourself. <laughs> and and uh, you can, you know, pull it out during a lull in a dinner party and, uh, <laughs> and start delighting everybody around you. Uh, Thank you, Penny. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Dave. This was so much fun. It's great well, to see you. All right. We'll talk again. All righty. Bye. Bye-bye.